A few years ago, I lived with my family in Parramatta, and we lived in a unit block that was on a pretty major road. Of course, it had all the security that you might imagine, including doors where you needed passcodes to get in. Anyway, one, one evening, uh, my family and I we were asleep, and we were woken at sort of 2 or 3 a.m. to the very rude sound of a buzzer going, and then the voice of someone who'd clearly been out a little later than he should, and maybe had a couple more than he should, demanding to us and to the other units that he be let in so that he could find somewhere to sleep. Uh, needless to say, nobody answered that particular call. We let him go on his way. Over the last few videos, we thought a little bit about the gospel, the basics of what Christians believe. We thought about our rebellion against God. We thought about Jesus coming to rescue us through his death. We've talked about the victory that he won over death as he was risen to new life. But there's still one question then left for us to consider. What is it that we're going to do with this gospel? How are we going to respond to what we've heard? Because no, make no mistake, Jesus demands a response. Well, broadly speaking, I see people respond in a couple of different ways when I share this news with them. The first way that I see people respond, some people outright reject it. There are plenty of people out there who you will tell them about Jesus, about the realities of who he is and what he's done, and they'll decide, well, they simply don't believe it. Maybe they don't believe there's a God. Maybe they believe what you're saying about him is wrong, and they want nothing to do with the message that you've just shared. The next response is one which is a little bit different, but ends in the same place. Some people believe the message to the point that they believe there's a God, they believe Jesus is real, they know there's a problem that needs to be solved, but then they want to try and solve that problem for themselves. And so they respond to Jesus by doing lots of things, doing lots of religious rituals. They might go to church, they might ask to be baptised or have their kids baptised. They might show up for communion a couple of times a year. They might do all kinds of things. Some of them might look very serious. The problem with both of these responses is that they haven't come to Jesus on the terms that he sets. They're really like the person stuck in a rip who's paddling with all their might but can't quite get out. And they ignore the message that we've spoken about. The third response, and the right response for us to have, is to turn to Jesus. When Jesus began his teaching ministry, when he came out in public and began to tell people who he was, his message was that the kingdom of God was near, and so he told people, repent and believe the good news. Repent and believe. Turn to him and trust him, uh, we might say. Now, what does it mean to do that? Well, there's a great story of a daredevil who, many years ago, planned to walk across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. This man was well known. He was a very uh, skilled tightrope worker. So many people came to watch this feat that had never happened before. And this, this man walking many stories above the water, any slip, and that would be the end of him. But of course, he was very good, and so he gathered these people together. He walked out onto the rope, and away he went, and the crowd cheered. He was very confident, and so he decided, well, you know what? I'll make a show of it, and he, he sat down for a little while and rested. He, he had a lie down, and the crowd just went even more nuts. And then he came back to the other end. He, he picked up a wheelbarrow and filled it with bricks and pushed it across, and at this point, the crowd was losing it. They were so excited watching this man and the exciting things he was able to do. And so when he came back, he saw the crowd in their frenzy and thought, well, we can have some real fun now. Who thought it was wonderful that I was able to do that on the tightrope? And the whole crowd cheered. He said, who, who could even believe you know, that I was able to push this wheelbarrow across? And, and they all cheered. They were so excited. He said, who thinks I could even put a person in that wheelbarrow and push it across there and get them safely? And the whole crowd with one voice shouts, of course you could. Yes, we all believe it. 
And so he asked next, who's going to volunteer to get in so I can do it? At which point the crowd went silent. And nobody would put their hand up except for one little old lady who was this man's mother. And she got into the wheelbarrow and he walked her across. And of course, everything was fine because he was so skilled. Now, that's an interesting story for helping us understand what it means to really turn to Jesus and trust him. You see, some people would say, yeah, of course I believe Jesus is God. Of course I believe he can save. But in fact, there's very little in the way they behave that would make you believe it. Now, you see, Jesus' call to repent and believe, to turn and to trust, is more than that. That word repent means to turn around. And in particular, it means to turn away from our rebellion against God and turn to him, to submit to him and to trust, to stop being the ones who think we can be our own rescuer, our own saviour and to throw ourselves on Jesus who can be. You see, this call to repent and to believe will change everything for us. And when we really understand the depths of our rebellion and the depths of the trouble, how could we do anything else? No one gets saved from things that are good. No one's ever been saved from the love of their mother or chocolate cake. We get saved from things that are bad, things that would harm us. Sin hurts us eternally. It separates us from God. But Christ came to save us, to draw us to himself, that we can enjoy him for all time, for eternity. And so how could we go on in the thing that has separated us from God in the first place? And so the very simple question for you and for all of us as we hear this message is, what will we do? Will we trust Jesus enough that we will turn to him and that we will live for him 